Mental imagery involves visualizing doing a task, but not actually doing it. Mental imagery is often used in sports when athletes visualize themselves doing a certain task as part of their warm-up. Basketball players, for example, may close their eyes and envision themselves shooting free throws before the game. They picture themselves stepping up to the free throw line, bouncing the ball in front of them a few times, bringing the ball up into shooting position, reaching their hands in the air, pushing the ball towards the basket, releasing the ball off their fingertips, and using one hand to follow through all the way to the net. They then wait and envision the ball swishing through the net. Not only is mental imagery effective in sports, it is also very effective in stroke rehabilitation. According to neurorehab specialist Glenn Gillen, using mental imagery has been shown to activate the part of the brain affected by stroke, and it activates correlating musculature in the upper extremity too. Mental imagery also improves learning and performance of a certain skill, and it reorganizes neural structures in the motor cortex part of the brain, thereby creating new connections to get your affected arm moving again. Because the brain loves repetitions, mental imagery is not going to be a quick fix to get your arm moving again. Rather, it takes a lot of repetition over an extended period of time. However, this is a very easy activity to add to your daily home exercise program routine, and it doesn't even involve movement. So sit back, relax, close your eyes, and let's give mental imagery a try. First, we are going to imagine reaching for a pen. Imagine yourself sitting up tall in a chair with your arm on the table. Bring your affected arm forward slowly toward the pen. Straighten your elbow as you reach for the pen. Open your fingers and thumb as your hand approaches the pen on the table. Think about opening your fingers and thumb just wide enough to grasp the pen. Grasp the pen gently between your th fingers and thumb. Squeeze your fingers and thumb hard enough to lift the pen off the table. Next, we are going to imagine you are washing your hands. Imagine yourself standing at the sink. Using your affected arm, Reach for the faucet knob to the right of the sink. Extend your fingers and grasp onto the knob. Twist the knob to turn the water on. Using the same arm, reach for the soap to the left of the sink. Push down on the soap nozzle and squirt soap into your other hand. Rub your hands together, making sure to rub the front of each hand, back of each hand, scrub between your fingers, scrub your fingernail beds on both hands. Now reach under the warm running water and rinse off both of your hands. Use your affected arm to reach for the faucet knob to the right of the sink. Grab the knob and twist it to turn the water off. Shake your hands dry. Use your affected arm to reach for the towel hanging to the left of the sink. Use the towel to dry off both hands. Use your affected arm to hang the towel back on the shelf. Next, we are going to imagine grabbing a tissue and bring it bringing it up to the nose. Imagine you are lying in a bed and need to reach for the tissue box on your nightstand. Use your affected arm to reach out to the side of you. Imagine feeling around the nightstand for the tissue box. Once you find the box, lift your hand up off the table. Extend your fingers and use your thumb and index finger to pinch down on a tissue. Lift your arm upward to pull the tissue out of the box. Bring your arm in by flexing your elbow and lift the tissue to your nose. Imagine yourself blowing your nose into the tissue. 
while using your affected hand to squeeze the tissue against your nose. Next, use your affected hand to wipe your nose with the tissue going from side to side. Crumple up the tissue, reach over the bedside, extend your fingers, and drop the tissue into the trash. Next, we are going to imagine wringing out a washcloth. Imagine yourself standing by your kitchen sink. Use your affected arm to reach by extending your elbow towards the sink. Extend your fingers, rotate your wrist so your palm is facing up, and flip the faucet on. Next, reach down for the washcloth hanging on the center divider of your sink. Extend your fingers and wrap them around the washcloth, applying enough pressure so that the washcloth does not slip out of your hand. Hold the washcloth underneath the running water. Using your other hand, grasp onto the washcloth. Squeeze and twist the towel with both hands going in opposite directions with great force. Using your affected arm, extend your elbow and imagine wiping off the countertop. Use your shoulder to push the washcloth forward, back, side to side, and in circles, repeatedly until the whole counter is clean. Next, we are going to imagine using a knife to spread peanut butter onto bread. Imagine standing in your kitchen in front of the countertop. To your right, there is a piece of bread sitting on a plate with a knife nearby. To your left, there is a jar of peanut butter. Using your non-affected arm, reach to the left and grab onto the jar of peanut butter. Using your affected arm, reach for the lid of the peanut butter jar. Extend your fingers and think about spreading them wide enough to grip the lid. Flex the tips of your fingers and grip tightly around the lid. Rotate your wrist to the right to open the peanut butter jar. Extend both elbows, reaching for the counter, and set the jar down. Next, use your affected arm to reach for the knife on the right. Extend your fingers and slide the knife into the palm of your hand. Raise the knife and press it down into the peanut butter. Rotate your wrist around the jar to get peanut butter on the knife. Lift the knife out of the jar and hold the knife with your palm facing up so the peanut butter doesn't fall off. Using your non-affected arm, pick up the piece of bread. Using your affected arm, Reach for the bread and rotate your wrist repeatedly to spread the peanut butter evenly across the bread.